Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The word of God that we consider for our meditation is found in the Old Testament lesson from Daniel chapter 3, the words that you have already heard, dear friends in Christ. When young people are confirmed here, they are asked a series of questions. Questions about what they believe and questions about their faithfulness. In fact, we end with a very pointed and serious question. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this teaching and endure all things, even death, rather than fall away from it? That's quite a question. Quite a question for a 14-year-old, right? I always kind of wonder when push comes to shove, will they be true to that promise? Would I? Would you? Or maybe better yet, maybe we should ask, do you and I remain faithful to that promise? In this account from Daniel, we have an example of of three young men who took their commitment to the triune God very seriously. They were willing to continue to confess to their, about their faithful God even to the point of what appeared to be certain death. And it's very clear in their confession that they confessed or expressed an unwavering faith in God that he would see them through it somehow. In these three men, we see an example of what we are to do when our confession in Christ is under assault. We are to face the fire with faith. Last week, Pastor Day talked about the host of the, the show, the Dirty Job show, Mike Rowe. Mike Rowe also has a podcast that's called The Way I Heard It. And if you've ever listened to that podcast, you know that he credits Paul Harvey basically with the idea because it's kind of a spin off of what Paul Harvey once had, a segment known as The Rest of the Story. And so we need to kind of take a look at that here too. You've heard our account in our text, but in order to grasp what these three men were really facing, we need to take a look at what led up to it. We really need to take a look at the rest of the story. King Nebuchadnezzar led the Babylonians to victory over the land of Judah the southern kingdom in the land of Israel. And in so doing, Nebuchadnezzar ordered that they were to take all the choice men, so to speak, the promising young men, the brightest and best that Judah had to offer and bring them back to Babylon. Well, three of those men that were carried off into captivity were men by the name of Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. But these three men were not just forgotten and absorbed into the general population, not at all, because these three, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, were found to be very knowledgeable and wise. They were elevated into the king's service. In fact, they became very close advisors to the kings. In fact, they were people who, were, who would become administrators. Administrators over the province of Babylon. They were also men who very clearly wanted to remain true to the triune God, to the one true God, in spite of being surrounded by a heathen religion that infiltrated the entire nation of Babylon from the king down below. And this 
suddenly became an issue in a big way. King Nebuchadnezzar decided to to build a, a large statue, 90 feet tall. If you think about the two towers in the back, the North Tower over here and the South Tower, focus your attention if you can. Think about and picture the South Tower from the outside and how high it is. This statue is just a little bit higher than that. It was something, especially in that day, that would be predominant on the skyline. People would notice. They would know that image and be able to see it. When that image was completed, the king demanded that everyone at the signal, which was basically the the cued-in music, when the cued-in music began, they were all to bow down to that statue. And if anyone refused, they were under threat of death, being thrown into a blazing furnace. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were faced with a decision at this point. Obey the king or obey God and face the consequences. They chose the more difficult path. They didn't compromise their faith. And they were called out by some jealous Babylonian officials who reported these three to the king. The king was furious at these three, Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael, whom you and I know better as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because those were the names that were actually given to them once they came to Babylon. And because these three had found favor in the king's eyes, he gave them a second chance. Bow down now, and you won't have to pay the consequence. Well, now that you know the rest of the story, what would you have done? The king was furious, the flames were real. What would you have done? Truly a life or death situation. Would you have given in? Justifying your actions by saying, well, I was bowing down, but I really wasn't worshiping. Or would you have thought, well, I am better do it because I'm worth more alive to God than I am dead. Have you ever been in a situation like that? Maybe there weren't life or death consequences there for you, but you have no doubt, I have no doubt that you have faced some kind of situation where you could make a stand for God. Imagine that you're with friends, for instance, and one of your friends says that, you know, if someone is a really good person, even if they don't believe in Jesus, Even if they don't even know Jesus, God's going to look on them favorably and bring them into heaven. How would you respond? Do you remain silent thinking that, well, they're entitled to their own opinion, they're entitled to their own beliefs? Do you think you should speak up but are a little bit afraid to do so because you're wondering what's everyone else going to think? On the other hand, if you don't speak up, do the other friends assume that maybe you just agree? And if you don't speak up, how many of your friends would be worse off for not hearing how Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? No one comes to him except by faith. No one comes to him except through the Father, right? It's time for you and me to confess our failures to God. How many times have we missed out on an opportunity to confess Jesus, to take a stand for the one true faith? How many times have we put reputation or pride or fear of consequences, such as losing friends or our job, before speaking about Jesus in truth. 
when we do fail at this, we do have to know the truth. Jesus is always there for us. He's always there to forgive. We can take their fa- those failures, lay them at the foot of the cross. And when we do, remember what Jesus does. Jesus makes a stand for you and me. He stands up to God and says, I live for them. I died for them. I laid all those sins on my back and took them away. He speaks to the Father on our behalf so that our status before God is restored. And that's what makes the one true God different than any pagan God. The one true God extends to us a completely selfless love, a love that is unwarranted, a love that is unearned, a love that simply blows your mind. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew this about God, and that's why they made a stand. You can hear it in their confession. We have no need to answer you about this matter, they said to the king. Since our God, whom we serve, does exist, he is able to save us from the blazing, fiery furnace. So he may save us from your hand, your majesty, but if he does not, you should know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods and we will not worship the golden statue that you set up. God didn't disappoint these three faithful men. We find that no harm came to them. In fact, we find that while they were in the fiery furnace, a fourth figure appeared there. God had sent a protecting angel to make sure that not even a hair on their heads were singed. What if these three didn't survive the furnace? Would their trust in God have been for naught? What if their bodies would have become nothing but a pile of ashes? Would God have disappointed them? If you listen to their words closely, you would have seen that they understood that that was a reality too. They could have well died. But they stood firm, knowing that God and his will were the most important things that mattered in this situation. They knew God had their best interests in mind. King Nebuchadnezzar's words here encapsulate Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's stand that they took. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and saved his servants, who trusted in God and ignored the king's command. They gave up their bodies and did not pay homage homage or worship any god except their god. And so motivated by the love of God through Christ, many others have also made the same stand. Countless martyrs throughout the ages have looked in the face of the enemy and certain death and stood up for Jesus, confessing their Savior. Today, we especially celebrate the bold confession of God's faithful servant, Martin Luther. Martin Luther didn't die a martyr's death, but he certainly well could have He faced danger all the way throughout as he made bold stands along the way. He was a loud, clear voice when the truth about salvation in Jesus alone was desperately needed and largely hidden. And we thank God for the example that we have in him. And finally, we ask God to make us faithful and bold confessors of the truth. 
even if we never face a life or death situation for ourselves, let's remember that either our willingness or refusal to confess the truth could mean life or death consequences for those we are around. And so may we, with the help of God, willingly sacrifice all things in order to remain steadfast. May we be emboldened to speak the truth in love and worship the triune God and serve him only. Amen. Now may the the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.